Hey guys, this is Dave Douglas. I play drums in the band Reliant K, and you are watching Drum Chats TV. Hey everyone, this is Travis with Drum Chats, and I have the honor to be sitting here talking with the man Dave Douglas, the drummer from Reliant K. And we're going to be talking about drums and his history with the band and what he's doing now. So Dave, thanks for taking time out of your day for us, man. Yeah, this is fantastic. Thank you. So um, I know for me, you, you and I were talking a little bit, um, and the Anatomy of the Tongue in Cheek album was kind of, for me, my introduction to Reliant K, and ever since then, yeah. I've seen you guys live. So let, I, I'm sure a lot of people want to know, how did you get started with them? Are you the original drummer? And um, yeah, what, what's your history like with Yeah, it's band? interesting that that's the record you bring up, because that was my first record with the band. It was actually the band's second record. Um, but yeah, I knew the guys, um, in college when I was in college, uh, I went to college at, uh, Malone university in Canton, Ohio, okay. where the band is from. Uh, I'm actually from Cleveland. Uh, so it's just like an hour South of Cleveland. And, uh, I was in local bands and Reliant K was a local band. So I actually knew the guys because we would just like play random local venues together and whatnot. And I had a good friend who actually was like the original drummer. He was, he was on like a demo that they did. Um, but I think I was actually at Reliant K's first show ever. I'm oh, like 90. Okay. Yeah, I'm like 95% sure it was their first show ever. Okay. And, and this dude I knew, uh, Todd Frescone, who played drums with them. I think he just like went to church with them or something and they didn't have a drummer. And one time he just was like, hey, man, I'm playing drums with these kids. Like, you should just come check it out or something, you know? Yeah. And so I went, it was like a New Year's Eve party, and they were like in a corner, and there were like no mics or anything. They were just like yelling over the music and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it was uh, Relanke's first show. But yeah, I wasn't in the band then. So uh, And there was actually another drummer okay. after that, uh, Stephen Cushman, who was on the first record. Right. Um, and then when he left the band... Again, we already knew each other and, uh, and and whatnot. So I was just kind of a name that, that came up and it all worked out. And the rest yeah. is history. Yeah. So how, how long had you been playing the drums before you joined the band and how did you get started? Yeah, I started playing drums like super young. Uh, well, not like super young, but I played in like band in school, you know, like okay. I did percussion and whatnot. So I guess we started that in fifth grade. Um, and my dad played drums. So there's always like, drum kits around the house and stuff like that he played a bunch of instruments so that's yeah. kind of how i learned to play drums and guitar and bass and little keys and stuff like that so um but yeah so there's just always instruments around but i definitely learned like fundamentals of uh like actual technique of how to play okay. some things like in band in school you know yeah and i did like all the bands you know the concert band the jazz band the pep band the marching band, all the bands okay you know so but yeah it was definitely my dad who like taught me the basics of like the kit yeah you know, so, okay. um, but yeah, so I guess fifth grade, whatever, however old that is. Yeah. <laughs> 12, 12, or I don't know how old that is. Okay. And you may have mentioned it a second ago. How did you get introduced with the guys in Reliant K? Since, yeah. Since, since you were the second drummer. Right, right. Yeah. Um, I guess sort of third, but second drummer on records oh, okay. um, that were released like wide, wide, widespread release. Um, okay. But yeah, I just met them through a good buddy of mine, Todd Frescone, who was playing drums uh, with them initially when the band first formed and was just kind of playing around town a little bit and stuff like that. Um, um, so he introduced me to them, but we played a lot of places together. I was in local bands at the time. Yeah. And Reliant K, again, was that local band. So we would just run into each other all the time. You know, we were like competing at the like the, the two local venues or whatever it was. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we'd, we'd see each other a fair amount. Okay. Yeah. So what was that like for you coming into um, coming into the band? What was that like for you to be writing drum parts for, you know, the records that you were on? Um, what's, yeah. What's kind of your approach when, when Tyson comes up and says, hey, I got a uh -huh. new song. What's your approach to writing those parts? Yeah, well, Matt usually has some things worked out in his head, you know, for sure. Um, he's got the feel of the song and whether it's supposed to be, you know, like a blast beat or if it's just like an up-tempo thing or whatever he's usually got that kind of a feel you know because sometimes i'll just like start playing something and he's like oh i don't yeah. think that's it <laughs> or whatever you know um 
but yeah, so you can, you know, you kind of figure out what that feel is and, um, and then just kind of develop parts over time. You know, most of the time we're able to practice and develop things yeah. uh, through the years because we would certainly work on songs before we went to record them. Uh, less so now, like on this past record that we just did here for free, uh, the most recent one, you know, there was less of that kind of stuff. It was really just kind of figuring it out in studio. Yeah. So it's kind of weird on Air for Free record. There's a bunch of things on there that were just kind of like, well, that's just what I played. Yeah. Like, you know, so uh, kind of like your initial thoughts. Right. Um, the way that this record went down, it was just like that was what was recorded. And so it kind of gives things a different energy for sure. Yeah. Uh, but most of the time we were able to kind of develop things and, and again, Matt would have some ideas what, what he was kind of looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So with that in mind, um, how would you say seeing the evolution from the anatomy of the tongue in cheek to mm -hmm. um, two lefts don't make a right, but three do and on and so forth. How would you say that the evolution of the sound of the Reliant K records changed your playing? You know, there are some that are really, Sadie Hawkins mm -hmm. dance esque, and then you've got Devastation and Reform, where it's a little bit darker. Um, yeah, yeah. What what was that? Just kind of a it just happened the way we wrote the rest of the songs, or was there a, kind of a gradual change that you saw in yourself? Um, I mean, I certainly developed as a drummer. Like I've been playing drums for a long time, but really never as my first instrument. Guitar is my first instrument, actually. Okay. Um, anymore, I would probably say drums, just because I feel like I can sit down and whip something out, you know, if I'm doing yeah. like a, a session or something like that where I'm recording for someone or something like that, like um, drums is definitely where I'm the most comfortable now. Yeah. Um, but, you know, so playing Relax K like certainly, certainly helped to develop that. Like when, when we worked on anatomy and recorded anatomy, it really was just like, I mean, I honestly was, I think I was only in the band for like two or three weeks when we went into the studio to do anatomy. Okay. So all the demos for anatomy were already done by other people that were playing temporarily. Um, uh, Jared Byers was playing in this window between Stephen Cushman and myself. Um, and he, uh, Jared Byers, had done a lot of the demos for Anatomy. So I was really kind of just like taking a lot of cues from what he had done on the demos, you know. Okay. Um, so certainly bringing myself into it a little bit, but yeah. but following the, the form that he had kind of laid out already. Um, and also at the time, you know, like I had come from more like, I don't know, a little bit more like uh, as far as drumming went, like most of my experience was was not in like pop punk kind of stuff. Okay. So, so I think by the time we got to doing like two laughs, once we were like a record deeper in, you know, it's like already a, a year and a half or two years in uh, being in the band. And I think I'd kind of developed a little bit more of what I felt like uh what i was supposed to be doing then you know like what yeah. my style was in this context of music so it's definitely like way more put together um once we got past anatomy actually okay you know yeah yeah so um going from the writing part and even the studio we can uh -huh. get into um actually like just the the live part um, yeah, you know, there, there's a lot of guys who are covering your drum parts on YouTube and stuff like that. Yeah, um, right. And I'm sure a lot of people want want to know, like myself included, when y'all get done with sound check and you're about to go on stage, or mm -hmm. when you're prepping for a show, um, yeah. do you have like um, rudiments you go through? Do you do stretching? Are you kind of playing the whole set? Like, what's what's your approach before you get on stage to make sure that you're ready to go and do your best? Yeah, most of the time, you know, we're pretty rehearsed. Uh, <laughs> sort of <laughs> most of the time we're rehearsed um and uh you know i know the arrangements and whatnot so um i'm not like really like mentally going through the set yeah um, beforehand but i do have like a half hour like warm-up kind of routine that i do okay and like hanging out beating on a practice pad and i definitely go through rudiments and i have a couple patterns that i just kind of have figured out like developed over the year yeah. that combine some different rudiments and um just kind of like really just get the blood flowing you know because um for a lot of years i didn't warm up mm -hmm. and like three songs in or so it's just like cramps it was just trying oh no you can like when matt's gonna talk or something and you're just like oh my gosh th yeah. <laughs> thank you thank yeah. you so much so um you know i got older and was like oh you know i could just warm up 
Yeah. And that, that's going to change my, my world, you know? So, right. yeah, I definitely have a routine um, hanging out in the practice pad. And I definitely, like, do a lot of full body stretching, you know, because just playing drums is just tough on your body. And I tend to be pretty physical um, yeah. when I'm playing. And uh, so just stretching and just having your whole body feel good, you know, okay. is, is pretty helpful. But I also, like, it's I'm, like, obsessive about I have to, have to have coffee about a half hour before we play. Okay. It's just like, it's a, it's a disaster if I don't have coffee. So. <laughs> yeah. No. The I mean, songs are fast, you know. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> you need, need um, yeah. caffeine induced. Yeah, it's <laughs> weird. It's like, I mean, I drink a lot of coffee, like you know, like a regular coffee drink or whatever, and um, yeah, I don't feel like it affects me. Okay. In a norm, like on a normal day, I don't feel like coffee affects me. I'm just drinking coffee, you know. Yeah, same here. But it's incredible the difference when I'm playing drums and okay. I play to a click. Yeah. So, so I've got this metronome just going in my ear, you know, and it's like the loudest thing in my ears. You know? Right. So, um, so it's consistent. Like if we're playing something at 180, it's 180. That's what it is, you know? And so, um, it's just dramatic how different it feels if I have coffee or don't have coffee. Yeah. It's like, it's pretty mind blowing to me. Yeah. It's the only time I noticed the caffeine, you know, but it's pretty amazing. Um, if I don't have it, the, it just everything seems like too fast. You know, I'm just like, oh, these songs are so fast. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I gotta have my coffee. Okay. I mean, that's good to know because, like, I know for me, I I play for a church here in Austin, and yeah, um, I'm I'm a heavy hitter. I'll, I'll, I'm like you said, I'm pretty active. Yeah, man. I do stretching yeah. in a lot of water, and I mentioned that to somebody. Um, I was stretching for like a half hour and they're yeah. like, you stretch before you play. Why? And I'm like, cause it makes a huge difference. I think, uh, and huge. I, don't, I don't think a lot of people know that even drummers who don't do a, a warm up, how much yeah. it, it can affect it, you know? Yeah. You know, it wasn't that long ago. I was having a conversation with a good buddy of mine. His name's Anthony Fodi and he is a fantastic drummer. And I was just talking about warming up and he was like, Oh, I should maybe warm up. I'm like, are you kidding? You don't warm up. Like, I don't know. Just you feel like when someone gets to a certain level, yeah, like they've spent so much time like tuning, like they're playing and like learning all these things about the drums and different styles, and, yeah, and all this, all these patterns and everything. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I just kind of feel like, oh well, they probably take care of their body when they play too. Yeah, um, it's just one of those things that you don't really think about. Yeah, um, I don't think most people think about it, like playing drums, like stretching before. Like, well, it is really physical. And even with your timing, like for me, it really helps my my time. It helps me to be really tight if I'm warmed up. Definitely. You know, you're just your body's just working better. Right. You know, um, but it's the same thing with like guitarists, like doing scales or something. And again, most guitarists don't. Yeah. But guys who are pretty serious, they'll do it. You know. Yeah. Uh, same thing with your voice if you're singing. You know. Yeah. You should pro- probably warm up. Yeah. <laughs> if you wanna, if you wanna sing like more consistently. You right. Know? So, yeah, I, I highly recommend it, warming up. So um, what's your approach to getting your sound? Um, do you have it, do you, like, when you are on the road with, with, with those guys yeah. or anybody, are you teching for yourself? you have somebody else? Or do you have, like, certain certain ways of getting your drums to sound the way that they do? Mm. Yeah, um, at different times we've had, we've had um, – techs within various roles and whatnot. Uh, and when we were touring super heavily, we, like, we pretty much always had techs for everything. So there was a lot of days, and I feel like now looking back, I'm just like, what was I thinking? But there were a lot of days that I would like, literally like the intro music would be playing and we're like walking out on stage and I had not seen the stage yet. And I'm like, oh, this is what it looks like today. Like literally hadn't seen, seen the drum, like nothing. Okay. And it's crazy to me now. Yeah. Um, and the last few tours that we've done, uh, I'm for the most part teching for myself. Sometimes someone would tear things down or whatnot um, and maybe put some things together. But for the yeah. most part, I'm teching for myself. Um, but really, uh, even back in the day, most of the time, I would still do all my own tuning and stuff like that, you know. So obviously the tuning is like a huge part of the actual sound of the drum, of course, yeah. you know. Um, and I feel like I was pretty bad at tuning initially, but I think I've gotten pretty good at it okay. uh, now. So. Yeah, I mean, we all have our little tips and tricks, things that we like to do when we're tuning drums. So I kind of, I yeah. have a few, you know. Yeah. So um, I, I was wondering, talking about tuning and stuff. I saw yeah. like, your most recent Battlefield kit. Um, yeah. You've got your rack tom suspended off of your kick drum. Um, yeah. But it looks 
it, it looks like it's a pretty big diameter and such a shallow shell. What what yeah. are what are your drum sizes? That, that yeah, I using? wanted to like I wanted it to be like I felt like I was taking a huge risk with that. <laughs> sure. I I yeah I've always like hated hated rack toms attached to kick drums. Same here. I yeah. always always hated them yeah. so much, and I've never owned a kit that. That had you know that had that right. Right. I always made sure that wasn't there. Kick drum was just on its own. Yeah. And uh, so, but with this kit, like I have a few modern style kits, you know, including a battlefield yeah. kit that's like very modern, you know. Right. And so I wanted something that felt a little bit more retro. I wanted it to be big sizes, and I really did want um, shallow drums, just to be like more of a retro thing. Yeah. Um, and then again to take that risk, I kept having these conversations with with Colt about it. I was just like, man, I really want this rack tom attached yeah. to the kick drum, but I just don't want it to look dumb. You know, I'm sure. just like, I generally hate it. Yeah. Um, so I was just like, I really want to make sure it's got like the the rail, like the banana rail kind of thing. Yeah. That's yeah. like super old school, you know. So it's like a modern, you know, it's like a modern version of that. You yeah. Know? So it's like a little beefier and whatnot. Right. But it's still got that old feel to it being on that rack rail. And I really kind of wanted to put another one on the other side and have my ride also attached to my kick drum. Yeah. I thought that would be really sick. Yeah. But uh, he was a little concerned about it just with like all the weight and just like oh. smash it. Because I crash on the ride cymbal a lot, yeah, you know. For sure. Obviously like, you know, hitting a rack time, you know, whatever. How, however many times a song is one thing. Yeah. But just like beating the heck out of a ride cymbal yeah. is, is a lot of stress like. For a, you know a lot of time, right? Uh, for a kick drum, and, and they're they're pretty um, thin plies. So, so he's like, eh, I don't want to do that. Man. And I was like, okay, cool. I can I can get on board with that. But yeah, the sizes are are real big. The rack tom on that kit is a uh, thirteen. It's a thirteen by. I can't remember what we went with now. Super embarrassing. I don't know my, the sizes of the drums. <laughs> I think it's a thirteen by seven. That's what I was thinking. That's what it looked like. Yeah, sure. it's they're all really shallow. They look slightly bigger because I got all wood hoops on them. Okay. So the the wooden hoops really extend it more so than like a triple flange hoop yeah. would, you know. So they look a little bit bigger, but it, I think it's a thirteen by seven. It's okay. Real, it's real shallow, but man, those drums sound huge. Yeah. They just sound so good. So what, good. What what other sizes are you using on there? Yeah, so um, the kick is a, is a, a 24, 24 by 14. Okay. And the rack, as I said, 13 by 7. And then I've got the first floor is two floor times. The first floor is a 14. I think it's a 14 by 8 or 9. Oh, okay. And that... Yeah, it's again like super shallow. Yeah, super shallow, and then a sixteen by thirteen, I think. Okay. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, but they're all shallow. And then the the snare drum as well. I've for years and years and years played fourteen by sevens, yeah. seven inch deep. Mm -hmm. Um, but with this one again, I wanted it to be like pretty old school. I was like, oh, let's just do something more like a classic, you know, size. So we went ahead and did fourteen by five and a half. Yeah. Um, okay. which is the size of a, a DW snare that I have that I really really like. So we kind of tried to feel like like that a little bit. Yeah. Um, uh, but this snare sounds awesome too. Which in fact you can go on the Battlefield Drums site and you can order the Dave Douglas signature snare drum. I did not get, know that. Yeah, you can get that exact drum, uh, and it sounds so good. Okay, it's really, it's really good. Yeah, cool. So I, I'm, definitely check that out. I, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Did you have? Was there something that inspired you to get shallower drums? And had you heard some like, like from like you said, you're 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 mm -hmm. kind of taking a leap with the suspended rack tom. Yeah, um, yeah. You're like we'll see how it happens. Um, but uh -huh, even, yeah. even with the size, like a fourteen by nine floor tom. Did you have like an idea where you're like, I just thought of this. Let's see what happens with it. Like, what, what, yeah. how that happened? I just, um, I'd seen a couple like retro style and some like super old, like actually classic retro kits that, that were pretty shallow Okay. Um, in the last couple of years. And I just thought they were just so interesting and unique looking. And 
I wanted to, obviously with Reliant K, like there's only so kind of retro you can go, just like the style right. of the music that we play. Like it yeah. has to be, it has to sound a certain way, you know, and obviously it's evolved over time and whatnot. Sure. But I wanted to do something that was a little different than the kits that I already had. Okay. So um, one is like with this kit, I this kit that I currently have um, on the road is, is, um, is Birch. And none of them, all my other kits that I've always had on the road are maple. So I was like, oh, let's do a birch kit. Yeah. And let's just do like bigger sizes. Cause I, I have, um, a bunch, a couple of my kits are like pretty small sizes. And for a lot of years I had kind of small drums that I had on the road. Um, and then I just kind of keep getting bigger and bigger with them over time. Yeah. But I just wanted something that was a little bit like kind of bombastic as far as the sizes. So I wanted like bigger sizes with that 24 inch kick and yeah. 13 inch rack tom and um, and then I just thought with the if we went with the shallow just to kind of actually to offset a little bit of the way that the birch sounds because the birch tends to be kind of focused right um, and it has kind of a mid range like a punch to it okay that's really good because it can be like really aggressive and and punchy sounding yeah um, but I didn't want them to be like like really drawn out I wanted them to to have a little bit like shorter decay possibly or um, we just through our discussions, we just decided that like shortening the sh the, the shells yeah. would maybe just give it a little bit more of what I was looking for. So I wanted them really short, and and we were just kind of talking, going back and forth with with how shallow to make them, you know. And uh, this is where we ended up, which I felt like was a, was a good place. It wasn't like scary shallow, but it was it's definitely shallow. Definitely, no, it's noticeable for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. how then? How with that? such attention to tone and yeah. what goes into, you know, well, we want this, how do we get there kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I think there's a misconception with a lot of people, drummers and non-drummers with the recording aspect of it. Like, uh -huh. you know, are you using, when you're in the studio recording, how different mm -hmm. of a kit are you playing than you would live? Are you using different kinds of heads? Or are you like, nope, this mm -hmm. is the same here as it is there? Like what's, what's, what's that look like differently? Yeah. It's like almost entirely the same. Okay. Uh, usually I have different options for snare. Yeah. But I'll basically just have exactly what I do live. Okay. I'll just do do that in the studio. Um, and then, you know, we'll like really mess around with, obviously with snare tones yeah. quite a bit. But, um, but the toms and the kick and stuff are just what I do, okay. you know. And if it's not working for a song, obviously we'll do something different. Yeah. But for the most part, I just do the same thing live. Okay. Um, but then with snare drums, 